All right, so in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is talk about how to take uh, images you have and stretch them to make them work uh, with your slides or, or with your courses. Now, here's an image. Uh, this one's actually going to work really well for us. Uh, we have an image here. It's centered in the background, right? So it's it's kind of centered uh, in the page. And we might want something where uh, we want to put some text here. The problem, though, is because the head's kind of centered, we have limited space. So uh, what you can do is just move this image over, and now you've got a little bit more space here. A couple things you can do is you can right click and change the background uh, to match this background. That's pretty easy. Uh, this is a great image because it's a solid background, uh, but we're just going to show you the technique uh, using the images. So I'll show you a few different ways uh, to approach that. So in this case, because it's a solid background, uh, what I can do is I'm going to duplicate the image by just shift control and drag that. And we're going to crop it. Let me turn this off here. Let's turn this off. Um, we're going to crop this here. And what we're going to do is just take the clean part here and now we can stretch it. And so what's nice about this is I can move uh, this head really anywhere I want to. So I'm going to do this. We're going to move him all the way to the edge. And then we can take this and stretch it. And this works great because uh, we have a solid background. So now I have plenty of uh, white space in a sense to add my content. Now sometimes you get images like this. This actually works well because in this image, while it's busy on the background, uh, we can take a sliver of the image as close to the edge as we can get. And then we can stretch that and get more image. So let's say I needed more, more beach image, right? Um, so let's say I've got this and it's a little bit short and I want to stretch this out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to make a duplicate here. And um, what we're going to do is let's uh, crop this again. So it's like this. Crop. And uh, since we're at the end here, I'm going to crop this so I get right at the end of where we're actually at here. So let's just go ahead and do it right here. And I'm going to move this over. And so now you can see I've kind of extended the image. And then uh, you could just keep copying and pasting that to go through since you know it lines up right. Um, depending on the type of image, you could also stretch it. And then this one, even though I'm stretching the cloud, it kind of fits with the rest of this. So you don't even really notice uh, that there's uh, a stretched image in there. Otherwise, you can copy and paste. You know, some people will play around. Uh, with the stretching, but um, it works great on the solid background. It works great when you have patterns and they're kind of straight line patterns. Like if it was just a header and, and, and images, I can uh, make little splices and drag them like this right here. Works really great. Uh, this type of image is a little bit more challenging, right? Because um, I've got this sliver here. So when I take the sliver, let's just go ahead and do that. And we're going to crop it. And um, I'm just going to get a really slight sliver. Um, what makes this more challenging is you can see, well, it's not too bad, but watch what happens. I can drag this here. It looks weird, right? So, um, so you can see that this was stretched. Now what you could do is just copy bigger chunks and see if you can get them to match. In this case, since the image is blurred, you could play around with the filters, right? Because uh, you have these artistic filters, so you have the blurring, and blurring may help a little bit. It doesn't in this case. Um, the other thing you can consider is if you're working with content, you're putting it on top of it like this, then it may not be as noticeable because it just kind of blends together. So just something to keep in mind. But the key difference is is that because of the gradient here, is when I stretch it, it gets really weird. And this is where I would probably um, grab an image that works, put it in the background, and then I would cut this dog out of the uh, background. And that's just a matter of right or selecting it here and then going to remove background to do that. And then you can put the dog over any background that fits that image. Now here's one that's a little bit kind of in between. I've got a nice sliver area here. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this. And let's go ahead and create a sliver. And let's just do this here. We're going to create a really thin sliver first and see what happens. So I can put that here. 
You can see the thin sliver works okay, right? So again, I could just create more thin slivers and just put them on there and you don't really notice it. But after a while, you'd start to see a pattern here. Um, the other option is I could stretch that, right? And that could work as well. Um, let's go ahead. I'd get a thicker sliver. So let's do this. So let's go ahead and crop that and we're going to do a thicker sliver here closest to the spoon. And then with the thick sliver, you have a little bit less uh, of that overlap, right? So that kind of works. Um, and then you can just keep uh, doing that. Or you could even stretch it a little bit if you want to and see how that works. Let's take that here. Yeah, stretching it a little bit is a little bit better, right? Now, uh, a couple things I'll point out. You notice when I stretch it, on the bottom it's darker, so it's not as big of a deal. You do see a little bit of patterning, but that doesn't matter. But here you kind of get these lines that makes it a little bit more challenging. Uh, one thing you could do is you can soften the edges. So if I, I'm going to pull this out so you can see it. So if I go to the picture effects, I can soften the edges and then um, it becomes a little bit more forgiving. Right now, you do have to stretch the image probably. But see, when I soften the edge, now that's a little bit too stretched. But when I soften the edges here, um, it blends a little better. And you could soften uh, the edges even more here. Let's just make it a little bit more exaggerated so you can soften the edges a little bit more. So you can see when you soften the edges um, how it blends better. So then it's just a matter of you know, dragging those over here. And now you can see that. Now, it doesn't look that great because you see them on here, but if we actually look at it in reading view, uh, you don't notice the softened edges. Um, so it works well. And again, you're going to have content over there. So if you, you know, you put some text in here, let's just do that. We've got some text here. Let's make that white. Right, and then go back to reading view. You know, you got the softened edges, but you don't even really notice that. So those are the two main ways you can do that. One is you can find something like this or this image where you can easily do a little sliver and stretch it. It's not as noticeable, and that works when um, there's gradients or solids that can be stretched. As you can see, it doesn't work for something like this. And here's a good middle ground where it kind of works. Just take bigger chunks and do that soften edges. And once you get your content on there, the people aren't even going to notice that.